My name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a lot of fun because we're gearing up for busy season and we want to take you along for the ride. This week we're going to be prepping our workspace. We have two separate workspaces here where we live. I have a full garage where I do a lot of my woodworking and then I have this studio space where we film our YouTube videos. During busy season, this room becomes full construction mode where we are tackling all the projects that we need to create to create inventory for our upcoming shows. We do a couple of Christmas shows over the holidays and these are our biggest shows of the year. We are excited because we are going to be sharing with you all of the inventory and projects that we're going to be working on over the next couple of weeks. The shows that we are attending are actually Christmas shows and so what we wanted to do was be able to show you what we're making early so that we're not waiting till December to show you Christmas inventory. That way you guys as viewers will have plenty of time to work on any projects that you want to follow along with our YouTube. Today's project can be made very inexpensively and it's the perfect gift to give this holiday season. As always, I'm going to work with some scraps that I have laying around the shop. I'm going to give you some details in the description box on what materials you might need to complete this project if you need to purchase materials. These are my tester pieces and so what I want to do is create a few today to know exactly what materials I need to buy to be able to make these in a larger quantity for my show. I know I want to take probably about 10 or 12 of these items and so I'm going to need to purchase some new materials as I don't have enough scraps in the shop. So what I'm going to use today is some stuff that I have left over and so this is actually half inch plywood. I buy these in a four by eight sheet. So because I have a whole bunch of pieces left, ideally I would only buy a quarter inch thick. That way it won't be so heavy on the basis of what I'm creating. I also have a bunch of these pieces of one by three by eights. And so these are just some scrap pieces that were left in all different sizes. They'll be perfect for today. Ideally, I might want some squared edge boards, but these will work perfect. They just have a slight rounded edge to them and they're about 75. These are three quarters of an inch. I had 0.75 in my head, but they're about, just under an inch deep. It can be a little bit difficult figuring out the dimensions for wood projects. The lumber that's at the lumber store isn't always marked exactly what the dimensions are. So just be sure to check what exact dimensions are the boards. For example, a two by four by eight does not actually measure as two inches by four inches by eight feet. To create this project, I needed several mason jars and because I have a lot of them lying around, I'm going to use them for this project. I like to keep old jars and not just buy new ones. So it's nice to upcycle some glass jars you might find from pasta sauces or yogurts. What I'm going to do next is measure the width of three mason jars side by side. That's gonna tell me the length of what my little kit is going to be. So while I was creating, I realized that I actually don't need the plywood that I was going to use for the base because when I actually put the mason jars on, they fit perfectly on the width that these boards already are. So what I'm going to do is cut 10 inches where they will fit together, and then I'm gonna frame up the outside using the same types of boards all the way around. That will give me a perfect little box to be able to put the mason jars. That worked out to be a perfect 10 inches. I realized that using the plywood on the bottom was just going to be a waste of some of my good pieces of scrap plywood. I can use this for another project now and just use a little bit more of this less expensive scrap to be able to create the base. It happened to be the perfect dimensions on the bottom that I was going to cut out using the plywood anyways. Being able to have them the same width of the mason jars is what I want. I don't want the mason jars being able to wiggle around too much in the base that I'm going to make. So this is gonna fit perfectly. I'm going to use my miter saw to cut my wood for this video. I really like this saw, it works really easily and it makes projects effortless. It's a 10 inch blade. Although when I started my business, I purchased this saw not knowing about a compound sliding miter saw, which would enable me to cut larger pieces of wood. So once I kind of get going a little more here, I might decide to get myself a compound sliding miter. going to create three bases because what I'm going to do is make three separate designs to show you in the video. I'm going to cut three of them to 10 inches. I'm going to cut six more pieces to 11 and a half inches. These are going to be the front and back of my bases. Now to create the two end sides, I need to measure the width of the board, which is three and a half inches. And I'm going to create six of those pieces. I'm 
ready to sand all these pieces and make sure they're super smooth before I apply them to put them together. I have no power. <laughs> <laughs> The next step for me is to paint or stain the colors that I'm going to use on the edges of this base. And so what I want to do is keep these samples really neutral. I'll probably do a few fun holiday colored ones down the road prepping for the show, but for now I'm going to keep these as neutral as possible. When you're preparing for a show, you want to keep things that will match as many people's decors as possible. So going too funky might kind of lower your demographic of buyers. What I'm going to do is use some rags to put my stain on. I like to use these because if I'm using this stain all day long, I won't roll through a whole roll of the paper towel rags that you can use to apply stain be able to reuse these and what I've done is I've upcycled all my rags from things we would maybe toss old t-shirts and stuff that get stained these are perfect to be able to be upcycled for this purpose I'm going to wear a mask and some gloves and get staining I like to use one for fine stain and one for drying it off <laughs> of my designs ready and printed out on contact paper and what I'm going to do now is take my stain boards and I'm going to use a 220 grit soft sandpaper to just scuff sand over the top. I'm not distressing, I'm just giving this a smooth texture to be able to help the stencil to stick better. That's all it takes, just a quick swipe right across. Using my Silhouette Cameo, I created three separate designs to use at the front of my hot drink bars. I think these turned out super cute. I just need to make sure that now they're the right dimensions for the front of my bars. So I'm going to highlight and drag and make them the size that I need for the fronts. I know that my dimensions can't be larger than three inches by 10 inches. So I'm going to drag the box until I meet my desired dimensions. So I'm happy with that. And now I can click off and click to send so I can cut this out on vinyl to create a stencil. Ideally, you want to leave anything stained for 24 hours before going to the next step. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna continue working. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to weed out all of the lettering on this to create my stencil. So I'm using a pin. I'm going to take out all of the letters and leave the centers of the alphabet in between so I can keep those. Using a plain piece of vinyl, I'm going to transfer this image onto the front. Now that I have my contact paper stencil and the transfer tape together stuck to the bottom, I need to now remove the transfer tape. I'm going to work slowly and work my way across, guiding the stencil as I go. Using a makeup sponge, I'm going to blot off a bunch of my paint because I don't want very much on my sponge. And I'm going to sponge over where I want my lettering black. So I'm going to do the top where it's black. You can let it dry for a second and then do another coat over to make sure it's solid if you wanted a solid look. And I'm going to do white lettering on the bottom where it's I like to remove my vinyl before my paint dries. I peel it off kind of like a bad band-aid. I don't hesitate, I just pull it straight up. And now I use my pen to remove the insides of all the letters that still have vinyl attached.
Now it's time to assemble our wood crates together. So I'm going to put on the end pieces first using my brad nailer and then I'll do the front and the back. Now I get to pick one of my designs to put on the front. Now that I have my wood boxes complete and I have three designs, I wanna use three mason jars in each one. So I have nine mason jars and I'm ready to fill them with some yummy things to put inside to turn these into gifts. So for my hot chocolate station, I'm going to use some hot chocolate mix some marshmallows and some peppermints, kind of like candy cane sticks. It's not the time of year to buy candy canes, so I had to sacrifice and just buy some peppermint sticks. Oh, <laughs> oh this long. Before filling these jars, I put them through boiling hot water just like as if I was canning, just pureize them. For the coffee one, I would probably put caramels, coffee, and sugar, but I don't drink coffee, so I'm just gonna leave these ones empty for now and then I'll get some coffee to fill these before my show. So I'm gonna work on the tea one because I love tea, so what I'm going to do for the tea one is I'm going to do tea bags, sugar, and little caramels. Another idea to add your branding is to use a piece of holiday ribbon or string or even a nice brown natural jute and tie it around one of the jars. That way you can add your branding tag to this or a little note that you want to leave for someone that you're giving this as a gift to. I will be adding my branding to these because I'll be taking them to the craft show. I also thought it would be a cute idea to use some thicker jute and drill two holes on both sides to create a little jute handle. Just make sure that you leave yourself enough give room in here to have your knots for the string. I have enough room in this case, but I kind of like them just the way they are. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. You can personalize these in many ways. I could see these with family names on them as well. If you're wanting to create this project using upcycled jars and not mason jars, you just have to know what your length is for your measurements to be able to know your own dimensions for this project. If I worked out my cost for this project, having to buy everything new, it would cost me about $5 to create this project. Give me a thumbs up if you like this project. I'm excited for a lot of our upcoming videos to show you guys all of the new designs that I've been working on behind the scenes. I've been creating a lot of new things and you guys are gonna be the first ones to see it. For my show, I'm going to be taking some holiday items and small gift giving items, but I wanna make sure that most of the items that I take to my show are sustainable all year round products that people can use no matter what time of season it is. The holiday time is a great time to participate in craft shows if that's something that interests you. You wanna make sure that all the items you take are easy gift giving items. When you go to a Christmas show, a lot of people aren't buying for themselves. So it's actually easier because dimensions and specific colors don't matter as much as the actual products. Christmas show sales are usually really good because everyone has a list of people they need to buy for. They'll know something specific about that person and that's the theme of item that they'll be looking for to give as a gift. It makes the dimensions and things that are specific about items a little less touchy than if they're buying for themselves. I hope my upcoming projects will inspire you to create some of your own Christmas gifts, even maybe using upcycled materials. In our family, we love to give gifts that we say are made with love, so giving a handmade gift is always more meaningful to us than something that was bought commercially. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already been part of our YouTube family, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next project.